so many f***ing issues with the way that they're talking about sex here. Okay, hi everybody. Thanks for coming back if you've been here before, or hi, welcome if you're new. My name's Mickey, I'm a therapist, and we talk about therapisty things on this channel. Today, we are talking about a couple that we haven't talked about in a little while. We are talking about Paul and Morgan today because they made this video called our best intimacy advice after five years of marriage that I have briefly scrubbed through. It's very long, so we're not gonna watch the whole thing from start to finish, uh, cause we'll be here all day. But I briefly scrubbed through it to just like see uh, what advice it is that they're giving out and it's all bad. So we're talking about that today because it's important. Um, there's lots of really like toxic and hurtful takes in here, so um, that's what we're doing. As a brief disclaimer before we get started, I want to be super clear. The content that we make on this channel about religious fundamentalism, people on the, the far right uh, or alt-right conservative end of the spectrum, um, I make that content not because I have issues with regular religious people, but because I have issues with the specific rhetoric that people like Paul and Morgan are spreading. Um, I want to be super clear. If you are a Christian person or you're a religious person, that's none of my business. I don't care what you do with your own personal religion. We're not talking about that. We're talking about these specific people because they uh, have made an entire platform and are trying to make a living spreading this advice that's actively hateful and hurtful and harmful to people's mental health and well-being. Um, so please don't come in my comments and be like, why would you attack me for being a Christian? Because I'm not. We're talking about Paul and Morgan. We're talking about fundamentalism, which are decidedly different. Okay, that's it. Let's get into it. What's up, guys? How you doing? I'm Paul. I'm Morgan. In today's video, our best intimacy advice after five years of marriage. Morgan, first off, congrats on hitting that five-year threshold. <laughs> Woo! Five and a half, baby. Five and a half, baby. <laughs> and now we are experts and very qualified. <laughs> oh, I mean, no. we had, we did a few um, married sex advice videos early on. Yeah. So we're at least more qualified to talk on it now than we were back then. <laughs> but no, what we do, what, what our desire is, is to give you guys any insights that we have yeah where yeah. we're at mm -hmm. there are too many christian couples out there who never talk about this the church i don't know if they do like an incredible job talking about this so they, i feel like they tend to just kind of like say yeah. you guys can talk about that or learn about that somewhere else but just don't do it until you're married <laughs> right right so if we can be you know the the help you all be the be the people be, 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 <laughs> that yeah. fill in the gap we'll we'll be that for you all yes very good <laughs> This is one of my primary frustrations with people like Paul and Morgan because they position themselves as experts when they don't have appropriate lived experience, any kind of formal education, degrees or certification, um, or like any training whatsoever. I want to be super clear. I'm not insinuating that you have to be a therapist to give advice on the internet because obviously that's not true. There are lots of people who make content in their specific niche um, that don't necessarily have a degree or specific training in that area, but just have a lot of lived experience or like potentially experience working in that field or something like that, that are very qualified to give advice specifically when it's evidence-based or it's backed in, you know, something that we can sort of quantify as being like reliably true across different populations and demographics and things like that. When people like Paul and Morgan just like get on the internet and are like, this is how my life has been. And so therefore it must be, first of all, how every other person's life or every other Christian person's life is, but also this is therefore true. And this is advice that I am prescribing to you. Like this is a problem. I don't have any issue with Paul and Morgan speaking specifically about like, these are my religious beliefs or like, this is something difficult that I've walked through. Like that's why we haven't really talked about any of the videos where Morgan talks about her own mental illness because because like, personally, I don't feel good about like heaping judgment and shit on top of a person who's talking about their own very personal journey with healing from mental illness. And I think there should be a place on the internet for people to speak about their own lived experience in that regard. But I take big issue, like all the issues <laughs> with them prescribing advice like this because it's their experience, because that's not helpful or safe or reliable. And this is why I always encourage anybody um, on the internet who is like consuming advice-based information to please be a conscientious consumer. Ask some careful and, and conscientious questions about like, why does this person want me to believe the things that they're saying? To what degree are they qualified to offer me this advice in the first place? To what degree am I able to validate that this advice is true based on evidence or research or like other outside sources? Um, and Paul and Morgan fail that test like 0 for 3. Before we get too much deeper into the video, I want to take a quick break because if Paul and Morgan are going to talk about sex, I'm going to talk about sex, specifically sex toys. I want to give a shout out to the sponsor of this week's video, Belessa, because Belessa is a bi-women company that specializes in 
in all things sexuality and they encourage people to empower, embrace, and explore their sexuality. My friends at Balesa and I are doing another giveaway because the last one that we did was incredible. I saw people in the comments actually talking about how you guys got 35 and 45 and 75 dollar gift cards for um sex toys and vibrators from balesa um and so we wanted to partner again to bring you guys another chance to do a giveaway where everybody who enters this giveaway wins something which is my favorite thing um balesa also sent me a bunch of goodies that i want to talk to you guys about really quickly because i genuinely love all the things that they sent me the first one that i want to talk to you about is the balesa pebble one of my favorite things about balesa toys is that they come in these adorable little charging cases that are like so discreet and if you saw this on your counter you'd be like oh my gosh what is that surprise it's a sex toy this one is the balesa pebble i talked to you guys last time about the air vibe um and the pebble is another suction toy but it's very different because first of all it like is designed to fit in your hand so nicely the suction and the vibration on this toy are controlled independently which is super super helpful my other favorite thing about balesa toys is that they don't have annoying modes uh that nobody uses you don't have to click through 75 <laughs> different things to get to the thing that you want you can just up the the speed or the intensity um up and down and it's very easy to do. The other toy that I want to talk to you guys about is the Finger Pro. Um, this toy, first of all, is super fun to put on your finger because it has a little strap, um, but this is called uh, the Finger Pro and it's an egg-shaped paddle that has 105 textured silicone rods on it and the thing in the middle actually moves. I hope you guys can see that. Um, you can up the speed on this one super easily and again it doesn't have annoying pattern modes like all of the other toys um, and this has been kind of a fun one because it's unlike any other sex toy that I've ever bought or tried um, and I can confirm this is incredible and it's waterproof just like all of the other Balesa toys. So if you want to enter the giveaway where everybody who enters is guaranteed to win something to get a free vibrator or a free gift card for a vibrator go click the link in the description because my friends at Balesa and I want to bless you with the magic of free sex toys. Um, so go click the link join the giveaway away and let me know what you think of your Balesa toys because I love mine. Okay, let's get back into the video. I was on Instagram and I actually saw someone I follow post about um, sex and married sex and I thought to myself in that moment there was this something welled inside of me that was like I want to post because I believe that sex in the confines of marriage is something that is so beneficial to talk about. I thought back on our journey with intimacy with our sex life and how far we've come. And I, I was just like, I think, and I don't think I'm wrong in thinking this and assuming this, there are so many married couples whose sex lives are pretty, and they could be a lot better if they just took some time to grow in this area. Oh my they God. Just settled. I'm going to throw up. The thing about Paul and Morgan that pushes my buttons endlessly when they talk about sex and intimacy specifically is that they sort of bemoan this like specific Christian issue of like, we don't know how to have good sex or our sex life, we don't know what we're doing. Ooh. And like how it's important for Christian married couples to talk about sex so that we can help other Christian married people have good sex lives. And the thing about this that pushes my buttons is that when a person is able, a person who is sexual and wants to have sex or be intimate with other people in that way is allowed or like feels comfortable and safe to explore their sexuality in their own time, you don't have to do this degree of learning after you've already gotten married, especially in like typical relationships where people are taking X amount of years or months or, or like, you know, a substantial amount of time to learn of their partner, to get to know them, to have clear and open conversations about their sexual wants and needs and preferences. It's not this experience where you get married and then all of a sudden it's like zero to penetration and like it's go time bitch it's just frustrating to me that like they are continuing to uphold and perpetuate this culture that far and away like they admit it disadvantages people and causes them to have to do extra learning after already committing legally to be married to this person to be tied to this person for the rest of their lives but then like still bemoan how difficult and like how important this content is like i just don't like it's the thing again where you like run face first into the point and they're just like they don't get it so and it's it's just just endlessly frustrating to me so I want to be super clear if you are a person who is like deconstructing from religion and struggling with some like guilt and shame around this please know that if you are a sexual being and you find sex to be something that you're interested in or that's enjoyable to you it is very much okay for you to explore your sexual wants and needs and preferences and likes and dislikes either with your own self or with another person or with a variety of people and that's not a shameful thing this is very human 
people who are interested in sex find sex to be like an alluring and interesting and, and important part of our, our personhood. It's not shameful or bad for you to want to learn about your own body, your own sexual needs, or your partner's body or their sexual needs, uh, regardless of what your marital status is. So like, please just don't, don't take Paul and Morgan's advice. Yes. Settle. I think settled is the right word. They've just kind of well, this is just what it is. Or they oh just my have God. A, they just don't know. They literally don't know that it can be a lot better. Why do you think that yep. is, Morgan? You know, so. So maybe it just didn't. They just have no idea. <laughs> it's a mystery. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> it's so funny that we're perpetuating this culture that robs people of their ability to do very important and useful identity discovery before they get married. <laughs> we're here to talk about it now, though. Like, that's not fucking funny. It's not funny. It's frustrating. Right. And so I was about to get on my Instagram and just make like this long post. I don't know how I was going to do it. And just write something out encouraging couples in their sex life. And then I thought, I think it would be better. We have this platform on YouTube. Let's turn this into a video. So here we are. So here we are. If you Also, I love that he talks about this as if they haven't made like 11,000 videos about sex and intimacy before. Like this was just like God struck Paul with inspiration one day. Like literally you guys yam on about this all the time. Why is it so easy to just kind of hope that sex continues to improve and shy away from having these conversations about like, because it seems like it should be obvious. Hey, is babe, that a how joke? do you feel like sex is going? How is our sex life? But it's so easy not to have that conversation. It's such an awkward conversation, though, it's because not. what if, and this I feel like has runs through a lot of people's minds, what if they ask that question and they're like, oh, well, actually, like, I've been, you know, a little bit frustrated here or a little bit hurt here or been desiring this here. And it's like, oh, wait a second. I was hoping you were just going to say, it's great. So there. <laughs> This is again the thing where Paul and Morgan actively perpetuate and prescribe this lifestyle to people that disadvantages them in like a multitude of ways. It is so much easier to feel comfortable communicating with your partner when you've had a long-term relationship with them and you've taken many, many months or many years to learn about each other, to feel comfortable with each other and to build that trust and emotional intimacy, first of all, um, which Paul and Morgan are on record as saying that they think long relationships and long engagements are bad and actually tell people that you really shouldn't be married for like longer than a couple of months or, or engage or, or dating for longer than a couple of months before you get married specifically because they think people are going to have sex before they get married. And also that when you are in a relationship where you're allowed to explore your sexuality or you come into an adult relationship having already explored your sexuality with other people, with yourself, through a variety of different experiences, you can so much more easily instruct your partner about like, these are the things that I want or need. This is what's important to me. This is what turns me on. These are the things that are exciting. Here's some other things that I haven't tried that maybe we should try together. Like it's not a shameful or embarrassing conversation when we are steeped in a culture that allows us to explore those things without shame and fear when we guard the conversation around sex as being this exclusive thing that only married people get to do it creates this attitude of shame and scarcity and like specialness around sex it's like children with halloween candy when you when you tell small children you can only have one piece of candy and you can't eat candy for the rest of the year and then on halloween night you're like fine whatever go off they eat the whole fucking bag of candy and then they feel sick because there's this attitude that like Candy is this special thing that I only have access to in these very specific parameters. And so I have very little impulse control or like ability to explore this in a way that's like safe for my body. People in these Christian circles speak about how sex and intimacy after marriage can very much feel that way because there's this like fervent manic energy behind wanting to be sexually intimate with a partner because we are gatekeeping the experience when it doesn't need to be that way. I think it's also really important for us to have a conversation about the impact that this has on people who are like vagina owners or people who have vulvas because these are the people who typically are viewed in this culture as having the thing that men want um, and are then objectified. And this is a very scary experience because if I have never felt safe or comfortable enough to touch my own vagina or to explore uh, sexually like what things I'm interested in or what feels good to me, it's very alarming. The idea that this person that I haven't even really been alone with for any length of time now now all of a sudden because we said the words I do and we're in the hotel room alone feels entitled and feels as though they own that part of me sexually that I haven't explored or experienced on my own yet. Um, and if you don't allow this person to do whatever they want to with that piece of your anatomy that you're not being a good wife. This is a very
very coercive and dangerous culture for people to try and explore sexuality within. And then Paul and Morgan have the absolute unmitigated fucking gall to get on the internet and talk about like, it's a mystery. I don't know why people don't like, are you joking? Like, is this satire? It feels like satire at this point. I don't understand how they cannot know why people are not comfortable having these conversations when there are so many like power and control and fear and shame aspects surrounding this issue. And again, Paul and Morgan actively try to uphold this culture and then say like, Me, be, 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 so confusing. Like it's not, it's not confusing. It's a very like A plus B equals C situation. My hair's all fucked up now. Does my hair look okay? I look cute. Oh. And it, it is, it's steamy. So once again, if you're 13 years old, you may not need to listen to this right now, but here's just like two examples of these cards. So I would say, I'd pull these out, say, let's discuss two cards, Morgan, and she Get would on grab one, I would tall. grab one. This one says, if I plan to surprise you with a full body massage, what are the essentials? Any added bonuses? <laughs> that one's maybe a little more on like the practical shallow side. That question is really good for like, for me, I have a hard time like telling Paul specifics because like I'm afraid I'm going to hurt his feelings or be like, no, I don't want that. Um, and so having a question like that, I can tell him exactly like, I want you to massage my back, like just my back and like not feel bad about telling him that. Or I want you to just use your fingertips. Scratches, back scratch, not massage. This is so sad. Uh, <laughs> I've spoken before about how I don't like spectral speculating speculating about like the happiness of a married couple lots of people do this with paul and morgan um personally i think it's irresponsible so i don't want to veer into that territory here um but i do want to be super clear the like card game and like sex dice and like all of these like sort of conversation starting things around sex um are not necessarily a bad tool to have i do want to be clear the dear young married couple podcast is like a christian like fundamentalist podcast please don't listen to that there are lots of other places that you can learn about sex that aren't uh, that so please don't check out that resource or financially support these people by buying these cards however i do want to be clear that the way that morgan describes being able to use these cards to me sounds very much like we have a communication issue maybe you know again i don't want to like speculate about paul and morgan specifically but if you find yourself in a place where the only framework in which you are comfortable expressing your needs or wants to your partner is when a questionnaire or a card or like some prompt is put in front of you we may have more work to do around the emotional intimacy the trust and the communication skills in the relationship it is very important that the person you're sharing your life with or you're sharing your sexual experiences with be open to receiving your feedback again your wants needs likes and dislikes and all of those things uh, because sex is an inherently like personal and intimate act and it's also like very much rooted in the idea of trusting one another. It's very important that you feel safe and able to trust the person with which you're sharing some level of emotional or, or physical or sexual intimacy. And so like, again, this is a part of this culture that like, we don't have to work on communication skills or uh, being honest or like how, uh, you know, for in this instance, a male partner can create an attitude and an environment of safety for the female partner to voice their wants and needs because we only uh, know each other for like a couple of months before we get married. And then we are like, uh, we biblically own each other. And so like, it doesn't matter. This is not like a prioritized conversation in this culture, which is a fucking problem and also like super fucking dangerous. I, again, I don't want to make any accusations and I want to be super clear. I'm not speaking about Paul and Morgan right now. I'm just speaking about the culture broadly. This is why so many people have like the immediate ick when this like fundamentalist culture speaks about marriage and like biblical gender roles and whatever, because it has this like very coercive and power imbalance energy underneath the things that they're saying. When you exist in a culture where you feel like your body is owned and, and like entitled to your spouse, we can run into power and control and consent issues so, so, so fucking quickly, which is a very scary thing, especially when we're not existing in a culture that has conversations about consent at all, but especially about consent in marriage and people like Lori from The Transformed Wife are out here talking about how marital rape doesn't exist. Like this is a fucking trauma soup for potential negative and like traumatic issues to happen around uh, sex and intimacy. And so I want to be super clear again, I don't care if you're religious or you're a Christian person, like go off, live your best life. Research supports that it can actually be a really wonderful part of your life if it's being used in a safe and, and conscientious way. However, please be wary of messaging like this that exists within religious culture, specifically the evangelical Christian culture, because 
you can be a religious person and also feel empowered, feel shame free, feel excited, feel safe around sex and conversations around sex. And the the message that Paul and Morgan sell about like, if you're not my brand of Christian, then you're not a Christian at all is toxic and like just also untrue. My next one oh God. was have sex often. Hmm. <laughs> you don't need to go crazy. You don't need to say every day we have to have sex and we kind of got made fun of i saw in a video we made probably a year ago oh yeah where we were just honest and said it's not like we're like super rigid about this but we do schedule sex so to speak <laughs> so to schedule speak, as yeah. in we're just like every other day the plan is to have sex mm -hmm. um early in our marriage that was <laughs> not the case and it really would lead to like hurt feelings hurt emotions um, every couple is different. We're not like saying you guys definitely do this. No, this is what works for us. The end, and you all can laugh at it all you want, but we've got a great sex life. So <laughs> it's it's definitely uh. gotten better and better. Great. <laughs> <laughs> I I always hesitate to use words like great. I know you but do, but it is. I mean, compared to like year yeah, one or year, year two, one. it was there was times in our sex life early on that were like so frustrating and painful compared to your one it was gr it is great booyah booyah it. it is great <laughs> compared to your one it is seriously like we leaps and bounds it's it is oh, really good goodness. yeah see that's what i'm always saying like i'm thinking about your one i'm like it's great now <laughs> i just want to draw attention to the fact that these people were making videos about sex and intimacy in the earlier years of their marriage they literally admitted this in the intro of the video and now they're describing how year one and year two of their marriage were like painful and frustrating and difficult this is again another important thing for us to be aware of i again i want to be clear i'm not speaking about paul and morgan specifically right now i'm just speaking about people on the internet broadly but i want to be super clear a lot of people on the internet fucking lie. Like it's very easy to lie on the internet. <laughs> Please be aware that the things that we see and consume as far as content creation oftentimes are exaggerated are outright lies or like they, they can be anyways. I want to be like so clear and open and honest about that because we have the tendency as human beings to compare ourselves to the people who are making content that we're consuming on the internet. This can be very dangerous and unhealthy, especially when people are fucking lying about it. So I want to encourage and empower everyone in this moment to give yourself permission to live your life in the, in the most authentic way that works for you and to be like mindful that oftentimes, especially people who position themselves uh, like Paul and Morgan do as being like, we've been married for X amount of years and so we're experts. It's very easy for that to turn into exaggerating and, and being untruthful. Obviously, you guys, we're only five and a half years in. We have a long way to go if we're going to be married for another 50, Why are you giving advice 60 then? years. <laughs> I mean, who knows how long we'll live. <laughs> I mean, I'm guessing you... Your sex life is awesome. <laughs> You're going to live for a long time. I think they go hand in hand. So we might be alive for another 100 years. Oh, my goodness. So, you know, there's always growth to go into. I don't know what I'm saying. Um, but, yeah, it's we got a long ways ahead of us. But, man, have we come a long ways. And that's what, like, concerns and frustrates me outside of just – Christians or not Christians, but we'll talk specifically to Christians who ignore or kind of say like, well, really, I would I would question your your genuine faith walk if you are having sex before marriage and see? you're justifying it for some reason. Because yeah. we see, you know, lots of people commented on past videos saying like, oh, well, you should have sex to make sure you're sexually compatible. And I don't want to like get into all that but not accurate you don't need to do that <laughs> again it is a it's a growth that takes place over time it matures it's like fine wine it <laughs> Does matures it and gets better you get to learn with one another that's the beauty of marriage I want to be super clear. I don't doubt that this does happen where people who exist in this fundamentalist culture get married and then learn about sex with their partner and then have a good or, or satisfying sex life. I'm sure that that's 
you know, a real thing that does happen. But I do want to be very clear here um, that statistically speaking, what we know about human development and, and human relationships, it makes more sense. And you're much more likely to find satisfaction or fulfillment in a sexual relationship when we do the thing where we get to know a person and we gradually escalate intimacy and sex over time. And so just because there may be a few people who exist in this fundamentalist culture that have made a success out of this setup does not mean that we should be prescribing it to people as the way. Because it's also equally true that there are many, many, many people in this culture who follow the rules, who do the things, and who, you know, check all of the boxes and then get married and realize that they're not sexually compatible or they don't have a fulfilling sex life or their partner turns out to be abusive or there's like a whole host of issues that are occurring within the relationship that prevent them from being satisfied either sexually but also just just like generally. Um, and so like there are a lot of risk factors associated with this behavior and it is very disingenuous for Paul and Morgan to say that like it worked for us and so therefore it will work for everyone because we know that that's not true. Yeah, so back to like having sex often, I just would encourage you guys, don't allow yourself unless there's like a specific reason, which sometimes there is, but just to take sex kind of so casually, be so unintentional that you're only having sex every four or five six days and there are lots of couples that they do not have very much sex i waited to address the have sex every other day comment until he said this for a specific reason because there's something that i want to draw your attention to paul and morgan both said we're not saying that you need to have sex every other day or every day that's just what works for us and then less than a minute later paul says people who are so unintentional and lazy about sex and they only have sex every four five or six days sir this is literally you prescribing the frequency with which you and your wife have sex as the way that all other people should be having sex. This this is the other thing about Paul and Morgan that pushes my buttons fucking endlessly is they will say these little caveats about like, well, I'm not saying that everyone has to do it our way, but we're just saying, and then literally they follow it up by saying, well, but if you're not having sex every other day, you're kind of lazy. You're being unintentional about your sex life. You're just like really being blase and like, woo, who knows? You know, like the bad sex boogeyman might get you if you don't have sex every other day. You don't schedule it like we do. Like this is fear mongering at its finest. And also it's contradictory and hypocritical. Um, I wanted to talk about this because I actually looked it up. Uh, the national average uh, for married couples having sex in a, a self-report study anyway, so like this could be a skewed number to be clear. Um, however, is around once a week. The average married couple has sex 53 times a year, which equates to about once a week. Um, if Paul and Morgan are being honest and actually do have sex every other day, they're having sex almost three times <laughs> as much as the national average, which if that's true and their sex life is satisfying, fucking more power to you. You know, that's great. I love that. They're both getting their rocks off. Good for them. However, I want to be super clear. If you are not a person who A, wants to have sex three times as much as the national average, um, that's perfectly fine. Or B, finds it difficult or like just for a variety of reasons, either like logistically or emotionally or physically difficult to have sex that often, there is nothing wrong with you. You are part of the majority. The vast majority of people in long-term married relationships are not having sex every other day. And for Paul and Morgan to prescribe this as the way that you will have a healthy marriage, first of all, puts a, a huge burden and undue expectation on people, specifically the people who have vaginas in these relationships, because it's a lot of pressure, again, to go from, I've never had my boobies touched, to now there's someone inside of me within the span of a single day that's very overwhelming. But second of all, sets up this expectation for disappointment, because again, it's the Halloween candy thing like we talked about, that this culture perpetuates this idea that you just have to wait. You just have to wait. I know you guys are all horny and you're all fucking ramped up and fucked up, but just wait. Once you finally get married, then is your time. And you guys can just fucking rail as much as you want to, except that that might not be true. There might be a whole host of issues that prevent you from having sex as much as you want to. And it also frames sex as a thing that men take from women, which is inherently a toxic and scary and, and abusive framework to exist within a relationship. And so there's just so many fucking issues with the way that they're talking about sex here. And again, I just, I want to be super clear. 
if Paul and Morgan are having sex that, that often and they are happy and they feel safe and they feel comfortable, that's none of my business. That's great for them. I love that. I take issue with them prescribing their lifestyle to other people, again, without the knowledge, without the expertise, without the evidence. This runs contrary to the evidence, actually, um, and with no appropriate lived experience. I don't want to dunk on anyone, but five years of marriage is not a long time. We know, <laughs> statistically speaking, like there's like the phenomenon of people reaching a certain point in a marriage where then you're like, after you reach that point, you're much more likely to stay together long term. Paul and Morgan have reach that point. I'm going to link that study in the description. Um, but just to, to speak about marriage as though like, and, and sex in, in marriage as though they are like the experts because they've managed to hold it together for this long. It, it's not impressive. And also, again, I'd like to highlight that they exist within a culture where divorce is seen as not an option. So it's not as though Paul and Morgan have really been going to therapy or doing the work or like doing the most to stay together. They simply are together because there is no other option to leave. That's again, not impressive. And it doesn't enable or entitle you to speak to other people on the internet as though you are the expert and you are, are entitled to force your opinion down their throat. And if they don't believe you, you're not a real Christian. You're not a real believer. Like that's so toxic and awful and abusive. <sighs> it's just all fucking bad. This is more recently, mm -hmm. but I wrote, um, study how to be better at different aspects of lovemaking study. And you <laughs> want to be careful how you go about studying. Cause it can get into that. Like, Ooh, should I be reading this? Should I be looking at this? Mm -hmm. I would recommend more often than not try to find christian resources because they tow that line oh, a little yeah. better but i'll right. use resources right. sometimes that i just feel okay about in my conscience but i um as far as study <laughs> goes for me paul are you uh, watching porn examples would be tell the truth studying how to become better at foreplay or um how and where to touch morgan during foreplay or during sex how to build anticipation little things that really go a long way building anticipation meaning like you don't just want to go right out of the gate so crazy like you want to kind of build the anticipation and the right. you know excitement so to speak. i'm sorry did we learn this just now after five years is that what i'm absorbing i just i'm so defeated you guys I feel so sad. I, ugh. This is the other thing about this issue is that I, I don't feel as though Paul and Morgan at the core are bad people. We talk about this in all of the fundamentalist videos. I'm not interested in like throwing out the baby with the bathwater and, and labeling Paul and Morgan as like fundamentally bad, wrong people who like, you know, deserve all the kinds of terrible things. I think the advice they, they peddle on the internet is dangerous and awful. I think the things that they say are terrible and awful. And I think a lot of their behavior is really harmful and hurtful to people. But I don't think that Paul and Morgan deserve a life of like sadness or suffering. And it makes my heart sad to think about how much more difficulty they may have walked through that they didn't need to. They, they could have had a, a much more like satisfying and safe and enjoyable experience both in marriage and in, in sex, sexual like development and intimacy um, had they not existed in this very repressive and gatekeepy culture, like shamey culture, which again is just like, this is the reason that I make the content that I make. For those of you who are deconstructing from this culture or who maybe are a part of this culture, but you feel kind of like, mm -hmm like maybe one foot in and one foot out, I want to be super clear. It is okay and possible and entirely normal for you to be religious and to have a relationship with God and to have all kinds of like faith and morals and beliefs in that regard. And also to give yourself permission to explore a very fundamentally human and normal thing. If that's something that calls to you without shame or guilt or fear, it is possible to find people and partners and cultures and relationships and community where you can discuss these things openly and honestly without this constant shame and fear looming over you. And it's it's also, I think, easier to develop yourself as an individual and as part of a couple or part of uh, a relationship without having to constantly battle with, is this is this moral? Is this cultural? Is this, you know, like a, a good thing for my conscience? Like, am I tiptoeing into, like, it's exhausting. Again, this is the thing we talked about in the Girl Defined video where it sounds like these people are just fucking afraid of the inside of their own brains. And like, it's like funny, but it's also so sad. Like, it hurts my heart because again, Paul and Morgan, I have a lot of frustrations and a lot of 
gripes with as people who share hurtful advice on the internet, but for every Paul and Morgan or Girl Define that there is on the internet, there are hundreds of people who we will never know their names or see their faces that are just living in this culture and eating up this, this rhetoric as if it's the way and who may never learn about the like safe and conscientious and, and research backed way to learn about sex and intimacy and that hurts my heart it makes me very sad and again it's just why we make the content that we make on this channel because and, and why i place the ads on this channel that i do because learning about sex with yourself or with another person doesn't have to be scary or fearful or shameful it's entirely possible and and normal <laughs> for it to be fun and interesting and exciting and easy if you want it to be i think that honestly this is huge for both sides men and women but I think honestly men need to be extra aware of their wives because men I feel like can pretty quickly get in the zone and be ready yeah women it takes longer sometimes but if you're willing to take that time to love on your wife in the way that she needs like she can be very ready and excited as well and so men if you're feeling like your wife is not really into it like maybe that's a sign of oh i should be taking more time in getting her ready and feeling excited for it and i i this is not bad advice um again i take issue with like the framework within the framework that this exists within but i this is also one of the reasons that i don't make content about paul and morgan very often is because i feel like they tiptoe the line of like fundamentalism and like the secular world this is not bad advice and i do want to be super clear if you are a person with a penis um who has a sexual relationship with a person with a vulva um the anatomy just lends itself to different types of arousal and especially if you regardless of what your genitals are if you are a person who has spontaneous sexual desire and you're partnered with someone who has reactive sexual desire, this is important learning for us to do. That there are different uh, wants and needs and like proverbial buttons <laughs> to be pushed that will create sexual satisfaction and excitement around sex. And so like I... I don't disagree with what Morgan is saying here. However, again, I want to highlight the fact that this advice is being given after five years of marriage and apparently five years of learning when this is something that in, in like secular culture, you can learn very quickly and very easily in sexual relationships. It's just, it's very frustrating and sad. But yeah, on the study <laughs> aspect, I mean, I've been more intentional about doing that in the past month and a half. And it's not like I've gone crazy or anything, but I've learned, <laughs> I feel it. like so much that for the last three years i just totally like clueless about or just thought probably the sex expectation cards have helped get me in this like i want to become more of a learner in regards <laughs> just to now this. don't wanna, overdo it though. you don't have to overdo it but i'm, I'm grateful <laughs> i'm grateful all right morgan you or me i i think i just have like one more you go for it i got one or two more i'll go through these rather quickly all right this one is <sighs> I don't know. Again, like, I guess I could see some people be hesitant about this, but it's blessed us. Um, I put be open to games slash apps. Oh, yes. Right. I had someone yell at me because I shared on Instagram some apps that Paul and I like to use for foreplay. And I was yelled at. You were yelled at on Instagram. <laughs> to listen to each their own, okay? Your all's private sex life is your private sex life. Ours is ours. Which obviously we're sharing some with you. But, Except you're putting it on the internet, but, but okay. I think that especially for couples who struggle with one being able to please the woman. And making sure that she is satisfied. And two, uh, going too fast. I think that these apps are really helpful because they make you take it slow. Yep. There's one called Ultimate Intimacy that was created by a Christian married couple. So, um, yeah, if you're married, I would encourage you all to download that. Um, and then the other one, I can't remember what it's called. I literally think, like, if you just type in, like, sex game on the app, Apple app store, it'll, uh, pop up. Okay, I'm not interested in the particulars of the apps. I am going to look them up, um, in one second. But, again, I think this just highlights the issue at hand, which is that Morgan doesn't feel, 
I don't want to speak for Morgan. I don't know Morgan. <laughs> Let me back up. In this culture, it's common for the female partner or the partner with a vagina to feel uncomfortable, potentially unsafe, um, and just kind of like awkward or like ill-equipped to have conversations with the partner with a penis about what do I do or, or here are the things that I want or this is what I need from you. And so the games and the apps are serving the purpose of like speaking for the partner who has like the discomfort in, in being honest about this. I want to be, again, I want to be clear. Um, it's like the whole tagline for this video. I mean, see, we clear. Using apps and card games and like dice and, and toys and whatever, like these are all helpful and useful and, and like fun implements in a sex life. There's nothing wrong with them, right? I don't, I don't want to be the person who's like, don't use them. Like, that's not what I'm saying. However, if you, again, only feel comfortable to speak to your partner about your wants and needs or preferences, through using an app, um, specifically if it's about uh, please slow down or please let's do more foreplay, we may very well have some communication issues, some trust issues, um, or you know, like at the very least just some work to be done around the comfortability and the vulnerability here. Because yes, can apps and card games and, and games be a fun thing to incorporate in your sex life? Sure great. Like, especially if there's like maybe a fantasy that you're like a little unsure about voicing, like I totally get that. That's super helpful. And I, I want to encourage people to approach sex in whatever way works best for you. However, if you're using it as a crutch because you never feel comfortable to voice these things on your own, I strongly want to encourage you to do that inner work with yourself and with your partner if it's safe for you to do that around developing the language and the comfortability there because you do not have to, um, and I would argue like in a healthy relationship should not have to lean so heavily on an outside implement to voice to your partner what it is that you're needing. And again, this culture just perpetuates this because it doesn't allow like female partners or people to feel emboldened and safe and comfortable to speak openly and to be assertive about their needs and wants. Using these cards is not a solution for the fact that the culture that you exist within is oppressive. Like if the culture is oppressive, you'll continue to have to use the outside implements because you don't feel comfortable or safe to do that on your own. Like it's just, it, it's like a temporary band-aid fix without treating the core of the issue and we could so easily treat this if we just address the core of the issue, which Paul and Morgan will not, cannot, they have said openly they, they are not interested in doing that ever. So you should look up the thing. Anyone yeah, watch the ad? Yeah. Non-vulgar, sex is vulgar. Love life is like eating the same food over and over and over. We've explored. Can I help you with something? <clears throat> I'm looking for a book on s history. Finally, I called some friends to vent my frustrations. They told me about this app called Ultimate Intimacy, and I love it. Why she it takes the on? fire from a dwindling flame and turns it into a raging fireball. That's dangerous. Wow, cool, Mom! You have no idea. There's no more searching the dark corners of the internet and finding all the wrong kinds of solutions. Ah. <laughs> ranging from anatomy and technique to lovemaking ideas. In fact, the creators of the app work side by side with certified marriage professionals and experts. Make lovemaking fun. Deepen your connection and strengthen your marriage with the Ultimate Intimacy app. What on earth? What in the fresh hell is this? I strongly want to discourage people from downloading either of those apps because they sound oppressive and rooted in this like fundamentalist shame e culture. Just don't. There are lots of wonderful resources. If I can find some, I have a couple of colleagues who are licensed sexologists. I will reach out to them to see if they have any recommendations about sex apps that are like based in evidence-based practice and research and things like that that are like safe for people of a variety of different uh, gender identities and sexual orientations and things like that that are inclusive. So if I can find some of those resources, I'll put them in the description. Also, just generally, I want to encourage anyone who's watching this video who does have resources, let us know. Like put some stuff in the, the comments um, and help out your <laughs> fellow friends. Um, um, avoid fundamentalist Christian sex advice because this is just all fucking bad. Um, let's scoot the thing. I'm not going to watch the rest of this video. There's only five minutes left and I'm pretty sure it's their Patreon sp spiel. So I think it goes without saying that, again, the advice and uh, expertise 
that Paul and Morgan are attempting to share with the world is, first of all, not based in evidence or research, but also far and away doing more harm than it is good. I very much want to encourage people, especially if you are in a place of deconstructing or like trying to leave fundamentalism, to give yourself time and space to explore sexuality or relationships or intimacy um, in a pace that works for you, in a way that works for you, but also to continue to do the work around the shame that exists there because it's something that takes a long time for people to unpack. It's a very difficult thing to unlearn. But the thing that I want to stress in this video is that there is nothing wrong with you. If you are a person who finds sex to be enjoyable or something that's important to you, that is okay. That is very common. There is nothing wrong with wanting to be a sexual being and wanting to experience sex with your partner or with other partners or a variety of partners. Sex is morally neutral. Sex is just sex. It's just a thing. It does not have to be a moral issue like Paul and Morgan and, and the religious fundamentalist culture make it out to be. And it is okay for you to utilize resources that feel safe and validating and affirming for you, regardless of what this like religious culture has to say about it. Generally, wow, 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 uh, not a big fan. A lot of these issues are things that people commonly work through in couples counseling. Um, and so also I just wanna give a quick plug. Uh, if you're a person or, you know, like a, a couple who's struggling with issues like this, please know that there are counselors from a variety of different life perspectives, religion included, uh, that will happily work through these issues and to help you create some progress. And again, like safety, vulnerability, comfortability, whatever, around this issue uh, without judgment, without shame, especially like sex therapy is becoming a very common and normal thing that isn't like lewd or embarrassing or scary. It's just like another part of therapy and, and uh, psychotherapy interventions that can exist. So that's that. If you like the video, like the video, subscribe to the channel. We do make content like this around once a month, uh, but we also make other therapist reacts and educational content here. So I'd love to have you stay. Uh, share the video to help the channel grow and to help each other grow. And I will see you guys next Saturday for another one. Okay, bye.